All right, welcome back everybody. So today I'm going to be going over the super scale feature in DaVinci Resolve and how you can use it. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so first thing, what is the super scale feature? Well, that is DaVinci Resolve's built-in AI upscaler, and it actually gives you better results than the normal upscaling features found in the base version of DaVinci Resolve. Basically, what this is going to do is give you a better overall image when you scale your image up to be a, a bigger size than it was recorded in. So for example, my camera can only do uh, 720p and look half decent. I've got a really old camera that I'm using right now, but all of my videos are in 1440p. So to give me a nice looking final product, I actually upscale my intros. And when I do that, I'm basically making the image twice as big as it was recorded in. And if you think about it on a pixel by pixel basis, this means that what was originally a single pixel, now to make the image twice as big goes from a one by one to a two by two, meaning that one pixel now suddenly turned into four. And when you look at the actual image quality, that basically is going to result in a fuzzier image when you just use normal upscaling and that's where the super scale feature comes in what it does is try to interpolate what those four pixels should look like instead of just creating four identical pixels with the original upscaling that's found in pretty much every video editor and what i currently have in the timeline is two different videos the one on the left is one that I basically just took some original 720p footage, plopped it into a 1440p timeline, let DaVinci Resolve handle the normal upscaling, rendered it out and put it back into another 1440p timeline. The one on the right is one that I used the super scale feature on, where I put it into a 4K timeline, upscaled it by three times, rendered it out, and then put it into a 1440p timeline. And I don't know if you can see this, hopefully YouTube's compression doesn't kill this demonstration too badly, but there's quite a world of difference between the two images. So if I zoom in just a little bit here, we can see there's a lot going on here. So on the original normally upscaled image on the left, there's a lot of grain, a lot of pixelation, a lot of noise in my skin, but there's substantially less on the AI upscaled one on the right. You can see in my eyes, if I zoom in even a little bit more, the one on the left, which is the normally scaled one, there's a lot of blockiness happening, and that's just not present in the AI upscaled one. If I scroll down a little bit as well, I noticed these buttons look substantially better on the AI upscaled one versus the regular one. And I'm even noticing that around the microphone's pop filter, the regular one is a lot more jagged than the AI upscaled. But I think the biggest difference that I'm seeing is actually in my shirt. In the regular one, there's a lot of graininess and it almost appears dirty. The image, the, the color changes entirely. This one looks a lot more greenish. This one has a bit more of a, a sky blue hue to it. At least that's what I'm seeing on my monitor. But I'm also seeing a lot more of uh, chroma happening in the left image, which is sort of a rainbow colored noise. And it's just exaggerated on the left side image. It's far less present on, on the right one. And even if we were to zoom out and make it a lot smaller, you can just see that the one on the right looks sharper. The one that's AI upscale just, it looks better overall. So I think it just makes a massive difference and it looks significantly better. So I would definitely do this if you're using a slightly worse camera or even if you just wanted to see if it could improve your regular footage, even if you're recording in 4K, give it a try and see if it actually helps your overall image. Now, 
does this look as good as if you were recording in a higher resolution? No, of course not. But it is much better than the original footage, as you can see. There's, there's no comparing the two. The AI upscaled is just significantly better. Now, could you compensate with editing, with sharpening, with noise reduction? Yes, but not exactly. But let me explain. Anything that I would do to the image on the left, I would also do to the image on the right. I would sharpen it, I would do noise reduction, I would do all of that anyway. So that just means that because I AI upscaled, I'm starting with a cleaner base image, so I get a substantially better result than if I was just upscaling the normal way. Now with all of that out of the way, how do we actually do this? Well, there's no easy way to say it, but you have to have the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. You have to buy Studio. It's significantly cheaper than most other video editors, but it is a cost that you will have to swallow to do this. So, the way that I do this, I start by going into the uh, project settings, and I change my timeline resolution to one that's bigger than the overall finished product that I want. I want my final one to be in 1440p, which is what I currently have it set to. So what I do is I change it to a 4K timeline. From there, I'm going to go into the image scaling and turn off the input scaling and turn off the center crop. We don't want this. We don't want it to do anything. We just want the original stock size image right in the middle of the screen with nothing else happening. Now, just going back here for a second, the reason we want the timeline resolution to be bigger is just in my own testing, I found that you actually get a little bit of a better image quality if you make it bigger and scale it down versus if you just make it the size that you want your final image to be, which is why I'm suggesting you, you could try this with even a 4K video and just see if it gives you any improvement. All right, so I'm just gonna save that quickly and I'm going to mute one of these. So from there, if you wanted to do the actual upscale, you right click on the video that you wanted, go to the clip attributes, and the super scale is right here. So in my case, because I'm going from normally a 720p video to a 4K, I would do that to a three times upscale and keep the settings at a medium sharpness and a medium noise reduction. I find that that just gives you the best overall results uh, you, you can play around with this, but I found that these were the ones that work best for my videos and the style of videos that I'm doing. After that's done, you should be doing uh, either an optimized media or a render cache. So if you're doing the optimized media, just click on it and, sorry, right click on the, the video and click on generate optimized media or if you're doing a render cache, it should probably start it by itself. I have that disabled for the demonstration purposes. I don't want it running in the background while I'm doing this. And in my testing, I found that there's really no difference between the two methods. So do whichever workflow works best for you. The actual render time and the output, uh, the export time were virtually identical with both of them. And I didn't see any noticeable difference in image quality. So whichever workflow style you like, use that method. Finally, what you want to do when you're actually delivering this is using a codec that DaVinci Resolve is going to like using, one that's going to be easy for it to edit in. So I always choose DNxHR, and personally I go with this one, the HQX 10-bit, because I'm only doing this up to 1440p. I know even this type is overkill for what I'm doing. Sorry, I want to try to minimize any amount of image quality loss as I can, so this is the one that I choose. From there, just export it out and bring it back into your original timeline, which brings me to my final point. Do not do this on your original timeline. We're making it twice the size, or at least twice the size that it originally was, so it doesn't make sense to make the entire timeline twice as big just to go back in afterwards and shrink it down. Just do this in a separate timeline. Do this as the very first thing that you do. The way that I think about this is I'm actually generating a new raw video for myself. 
So I'm taking what was a 720p video and I'm generating a 4K video to start off with. That's the way that I like to think about it anyway. And then just put it into your timeline and assuming you're using a codec that DaVinci Resolve likes, such as DNxHR, then it's going to be straightforward to edit and you shouldn't experience any slowdowns. And there you have it. If this video was helpful at all, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. I want to make videos that you want to see, so let me know what it is that you want to see. Uh, leave a like if this helped you and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.